It's less than 24 hours away from now, we'll have the men and women's conference USA basketball tournament in Frisco at the Star, just in our backyard here from Denton. A very exciting time for both of these Mean Green squads, and we'll have all the preview that you need going up into the conference tournament. Welcome into Mean Green Game Day. I'm your host, Nick Laupius. I'm joined at the desk by Saji Adam, Garen Schantz, and Jackson Donovan. And first of all, both of these teams making the tournament for the first time since 2016. The men's team obviously failing to make the tournament last season. But both of these teams kind of struggled down the stretch the past couple of weeks. What did you guys see from both the men and women's squad in these past couple of weeks of the season? Well, in terms of the men's team, you know, that last game versus UTEP, it was a really bad shooting day. I mean, last game, we allowed 40 points in the second half. That's You can't do that in a game. Then, not to mention shooting-wise, we were really abysmal. Ryan Rulwich shot 7 of 17 from the game. A.J. Loss was 6 of 14. Roosevelt Smart was 4 of 12. And it really helped that Ryan Rulwich scored 15 points in the second half, but it wasn't enough. And, you know, after the game, Grant McCaslin said, we've got the experience with closed games. You need to be able to hit the reset button and decide not to lose. So he said it perfectly. They've been in so many closed games, but they haven't been able to, you know, just go over that hump and try and win those games games and it's always the second half that really affects them in the first half mm -hmm. they look like a great team and then the second half they just crumble and in terms of the women's team it's the same thing the first half it's it's kind of the different in the first half they kind of start a little sluggish then the second half they get better uh, last game versus rice they lost a close game 45 to 47 they should have won that game in my opinion uh, terriel bradley she's just amazing as usual yeah. 14 points two assists she's doing amazing as usual so she's not really getting too much help i mean lauren holmes has really been helping her but they just haven't been doing enough to win those games. That's what I've been seeing so far. Yeah, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head right there, Shaji. Uh, going a little bit back to what you were saying with the men's team, they've lost their, five, their last four out of five games. And all of those except for that FAU game where they got blown out have been close. So mm -hmm. you know that they can compete with these talented teams. And going to the women's side, now Terry L. Bradley, she's basically unstoppable. She was a first, first team conference USA, but I think they're gonna have some trouble having to, trying to stop Charlotte and their uh, 60, 66 point per game average. Mm. I think the one thing we're seeing out of both these teams is they have found their identity. Sadly though, both, for both teams, identity is Roosevelt Smart and Terry O'Bradley. When you have your team based around one player, it can work for you, but when you're in the middle of the pack and you are proving that your bench is not a solidified unit and cannot come in and help you out. I mean, we saw with the women, their highest score after Terry O'Bradley didn't average double didn't average double digits. You can't have that if you're looking to make a run in the tournament, which is why we saw them drop here late in the season and they ended up losing four seeds because of it. When you go on a losing streak like that at the end of the year, it is very hard to muster any confidence moving into the conference tournament. I think we're going to see that starting tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and so that, that was going to be my next question. So losing their last three games of the season, the Snortex team, they dropped from the sixth seed to the 11th seed at one point of the season, able to work their way back up a little bit in the, in the standings. But going into the tournament on a, on a losing streak and kind of on not a lot of momentum on your side, what's going to be the key for this North Texas women's team to make a little bit of noise in this tournament this week? Well, for both teams, it has to be other than their star players. Like for the men's team, it has to be anybody that isn't Ryan Woolridge, Roosevelt Smart, and A.J. Lawson. They've been really carrying the load. And, you know, when they start to have trouble, the entire team just – falls apart they just don't know what to do so if somebody can step up mainly Zachary Simmons the freshman if he can step up he can give you solid points and rebounds he can give you uh, a solid game solid minutes and he can get you and get the job done same thing with DJ Draper he's the second best three-point shooting team uh, shooting player excuse me when he does start going off at the three-point line the team looks really good they look like a a cohesive unit and same thing for the women if someone besides Lauren Holmes and Terry Bradley can do something about it then this team can have a deep run in the playoffs yeah, and you know, like you were saying, Roosevelt Smart, if they want to be able to go deep into this tournament, they got to get him going. He's averaging 18 points per game and has a 388 three point percentage. So when they get him going and he gets hot, he's going to be a tough player to beat. And when he, he gets going, Ryan Woolridge is going to get going, DJ Draper is going to get going. They all feed off of him. Now, if he gets stopped, I think North Texas is going to have a lot of trouble. And the same carries over to the women's team with Terry L. Bradley and, like you said, Lauren Holmes. Those two are just about the only two players that are averaging over 10 points for North Texas. And especially when they stop Terry L. Bradley and her 19 points per game, I think uh, you, the North Texas women's going to have a hard time. When we take a look at both these teams, I'm going to focus more on the men's 
just because I think they have a better shot to win a game or two at the conference tournament. When we look at the makeup of that team, they have proven that they are brilliant on the offensive glass. Of conference play this season, they have had less than six games where they have been out-rebounded on the offensive glass, which is an incredible mark. However, they have only won two games on the defensive rebounding side. So whenever you take that into effect, you look at how well they do offensive glass compared to defensive. It all comes down to be able to amplify offensive rebounding and be able to translate that onto the defensive side. If they can win the rebounding battle all around, I think they can make a run in this tournament. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of weird just talking a little bit and thinking back to the women's team. A couple weeks ago, they were the best defense, one of the best defensive teams in the nation. And now we're talking about them possibly not making it past the first round. I don't know. It just kind of blows my mind. Hopefully, they'll be able to pick that back up. Yeah, so you talked about maybe not getting past the first round. Uh, I want to get kind of your guys' perspectives. How deep of a run do you think the women's team could make this season? Last year, uh, a really short-lived appearance in the tournament. You think they can do a little bit better this season? Well, for the past three seasons, head coach Jalen Mitchell has gone past the first round, uh, at least for the conference tournament. But this is the first time that it's actually kind of, you know, it's an it's a, it's a inexperienced playoff team. Only mm -hmm. Bradley and two other players have been to conference tournaments repeatedly. But I think they're going to have a deep run, honestly. I think they can get back on the defensive front. And if somebody besides Terry O'Bradley and Lauren Holmes can get going and they can stay on defense, not allow late game shots, not let the opponents get to the free throw line as much, I think they can honestly have a deep playoff run. That's just me. No, I think that them entering the tournament and they're carrying a three-game losing streak, that's going to be tough to overcome. Mm. I'm going to keep this short. I don't think Jaylee Mitchell and the rest of her squad can make it past the first round. I agree purely because of the youth on this team. When you come off a three-game losing streak, as, as I said earlier, it's hard to build momentum going into a, a tournament game. And especially when you talk about how young this team is, they have only two seniors on the squad. And so when you move into the tournament, I don't think they're going to have the leadership to be able to pull it all together and win a couple games. All right, how about the men's side of things? Now, we talked about they, uh, maybe a little more momentum for them throughout the season, have been a little more consistent, like we've talked about, a lot of close games against the very top teams in the conference. How deep of a run do you think this men's team could make? You're looking at, I mean, their defense just likes to crumble in the second <laughs> half. I just, it's so hard to watch sometimes, you know, because you're just watching, they look like a great basketball team. It looks like shots are flying in the first half, and the second half, you're just like, what's going on? Like, what's going on? <laughs> so, I, I, I feel, you know, Playoffs, it starts over. You know, you're starting over in the conference play. It's just new. Anything can happen. It's college basketball. I, I'm hoping for a deep playoff run. I for sure know they will get past the first round. I think they will. I don't know about the second game because they have to face maybe Old Dominion and all that. But, I mean, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I believe in this North Texas team. And the biggest reason for that is Coach Grant McCaslin. And mm -hmm. he's coming from Baylor, who he has been to a couple of Sweet 16 appearances. He has been... In, those, in the big spotlight, and he knows how to coach his team and how to win those big games. And I think he's going to be able to rally this men's team, and he's going to be able to get, like I said, the leader on this team is Roosevelt Smart. And if Roosevelt Smart can start being a leader and then Grant McCaslin on top of that, this team can have a deep run. But they will have to go against Middle Tennessee, which is going to be a tough one to beat. I don't think this team can make a run just purely because the entire conference is a three-team race. When you have Middle Tennessee, Old Dominion, and Western Kentucky completely bulldozing the conference, I don't think there is a single team outside of those three that even has a shot of winning the, the tournament title. Well, it's going to be a very exciting week here for the Conference USA Tournament right at the Star in Frisco, just a little bit away from the campus of North Texas. Coming up on the other side of the break, we'll preview the men's basketball tournament that kicks or tips off rather tomorrow, so stick with us on Mean Green Game Day. Closer and closer to the first couple of games of the Conference USA Basketball Tournament, at, held at the Star in Frisco this season. North Texas, both of the teams able to make the tournament. North Texas, the men's team, missed out on the tournament last year, able to come back this year, a quick turnaround for first-year head coach Grant McCaslin. And for this next segment, we're going to just kind of preview and run through the whole men's tournament here uh, on Mean Green Game Day. So let's just get things started. Who's the team to beat for, in this men's bracket for Conference USA? It's pretty simple. It's Middle Tennessee. And not because in terms of record-wise, but they have won the last two Conference USA tournaments. The winner of the tournament is the team to beat. That's just me and my book. They're, they're the top dogs. they got to win. And not to mention they are the first seed. They are, mm -hmm. you know, statistically the best team 
in the conference. But Old Dominion is on the up and up, so I think Old Dominion can upset Middle Tennessee. But for right now, Middle Tennessee is the team to beat. Yeah, I'm going I'm to agree with you right there, Shaji. Uh, Middle Tennessee is the team to beat. And like you said, they're coming off a conference, conference championship as well. And just a couple, a couple of seasons ago, they were in the March Madness tournament. So, and they went pretty deep. And this is a talented team. I know that they are totally different now, but this coach for Middle Tennessee knows how to win. And they're going to be very difficult to overcome. I agree that Middle Tennessee is most likely going to win the conference tournament. However, I'm going to be different just purely for the sake of giving the audience something else to listen to. I'm going to say Old Dominion just purely because I think they have the team in an all-around unit that can beat Western Kentucky and then give Middle Tennessee a run for their money. Just to break down how they ended the season, they ended the season winning eight of their last nine, averaging almost 80 points a game. When you take a look, they did lose to Western Kentucky, and it was not a convincing loss at all. They ended up losing by almost 20 points. But when you put that game aside and you look at their other schedule, they won a game by over, almost 50 points. When you have the team that can put that all together, it's impressive no matter who you're playing. Yes, I understand it was UTEP, and they're not exactly a great team, but <laughs> they are a solid group. Moving up against Middle Tennessee, I don't think they have the full staff to be able to win, but to me, they are the one team that is can even run the court with them. When you're so, looking at Middle, sorry, excuse me. When you're looking at Middle Tennessee, they got the best head coach in Kermit Davis. I mean, he completely turned this team around. Mm -hmm. So for him to do that, I mean, when you're facing the best team statistically and you're facing the best head coach, they obviously have to be the team to beat. Uh, but uh, that's just me. <laughs> that's, that's, <laughs> he has his opinion on mine. So, so what what player who do you think is going to make the biggest impact for their respective team um, in this conference tournament? Oh, when you're looking at Marshall. I think Marshall is going to be a really huge team to do to deal with, but more on that later. But John <laughs> Elmore, he is fantastic right now. I mean, he's scoring around 23 points per game. That's first in Conference USA. He's got six rebounds. That's top 20. Three-point shooting, he's top 10. Seven assists, that's first in Conference USA play. He's seventh in steals, and he's first in minutes. He's just doing everything for Marshall. He's the reason they've been doing so good. And not to mention, they've beaten Middle Tennessee twice. Mm -hmm. So... This, this team has Middle Tennessee's number. If they can somehow get past, uh, if they're going to face uh, Middle Tennessee in the tournament before Middle Tennessee can get to the finals. So I think uh, John Elmore, if he plays the way he's been playing all season, he might be the most important player in the tournament. We must have some weird telepathy thing going on because that's <laughs> my impact player as well. John, John Elmore out of Marshall. You know, I'm not going to nail off the stats for you because Shaji just basically <laughs> got it all. Uh, but this team is, I mean, they're going to have that first round by, so they're going to get that little bit of an extra rest. And then Middle Tennessee is going to have to face Marshall as well. And if John Elmore is playing like how he's played all season, it, it's going to be a tough one. I'm looking at Roosevelt Smart just because if UNT has a chance to win a game, it's going to be on his shoulders. Yes, I understand Ryan Woolrich has had just as much impact on the team but he is more of the assist man going to Roosevelt Smart. So if UNT wants to win a game and maybe win a second game against Old Dominion, because that's who they'll end up playing in the tournament, it is going to be on Roosevelt Smart, Roosevelt's shoulders. All right, so we talked about uh, already who's the team to beat, who's kind of the favorite here in this tournament. Who's the, the biggest sleeper team and someone maybe flying under the radar that you could see making a lot of noise? I said it earlier, but Marshall. I mean, Marshall's, mm. but like I said, they've beaten Middle Tennessee twice. They're first in scoring offense in Conference USA, and not to mention they have the best free throw shooting percentage. So if they can get to the free throw line, and, and I think they're going to win their first game, but if they, they're going to face Middle Tennessee, and I, Middle Tennessee should really be fairing Marshall right now because both games, it really hasn't been close, and Marshall just has their number. And so if they can beat Middle Tennessee, this is going to be a really team, uh, a team that can have a deep playoff run in this tournament. Now, I said this before the break, but I have the biggest sleeper as UNT and Roosevelt Smart, and I say that because Coach Grant McCaslin, <laughs> what he's bringing from Baylor, it's just too much to overcome. I mean, he brought this UNT team from last place in conference last year. Now they're in a spot in the Conference USA tournament. I think you can't deny the type of talent that Coach McCaslin is bringing and what Roosevelt Smart brings to the table. I don't believe there's a sleeper in this tournament. I, I honestly 100% believe that this tournament is going to be won by one of three teams, and it's going to be Middle Tennessee, Western Kentucky, or Old Dominion. I, as much as I hate to say it, I don't think there is another team on the bracket that has a chance to 
even come close to any of those three teams. Really? You might want to stay away from those March Madness brackets. I never do well, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm still going to do it. All right, and then real quick, uh, maybe looking at, at starting off the season, um, looking at a team who you thought, oh, they're not going to make it in the tournament, and now they're in the tournament. Who's the most surprising team that was able to crack the men's tournament this season? Uh, it might hurt me to say this, and I know they're your sleeper, but I'm going to say North Texas. Mm. You know, looking at it, they did not do good before Grant McCaslin came. They didn't even mm -hmm. make – the tournament and looking at it, you got a new player you got you got new players you got a new coach he has to implement his new system yep. everybody thought they're okay they're just going to get it done and maybe just barely miss the play i didn't even think they're going to make it honestly but they have really turned this around mm -hmm. i know the record maybe tells a different story but man it's really different the way he talks to his players he's such an intense coach he's always communicating with communicating with them in games whether they're up by four or they're down by ten it doesn't matter he's always talking to his players so I'm really surprised that they really made this tournament. It really shows Coach uh, Grant McCaslin's uh, talents. He's also brought a lot of energy to the campus. And, you know, he's, I always see him at all the events trying to get all the players and, yeah. and the students all hyped up. But my surprise team, and it's still surprising to me, is UTEP. They have an 11 and 19 record, and I just don't even, I don't even know how they were able to grab that tournament spot. But, you know, they may shock some people and they may win a couple games. I'm going to flip the script a little bit. I'm not going to look at who's surprising for making the tournament. I'm going to go who's surprising for not making it the tournament. And it's Rice, mm -hmm. just purely because of what they will do last year. Last year, they were 23-12 and 12 on the regular season. Yes, they had Igor, which if Josh was here, he would be you know, gushing <laughs> all over the place. Oh, yeah. But Rice has, has to be my surprise for not making the tournament. All right, so a little bit of a preview of the men's tournament. Now, the North Texas women's team is looking to have a bit of a deeper run than they did last season. We'll have a preview of the women's tournament coming up on the other side of the break. So stay with us here on NTTV. So getting closer and closer to the women's tournament, North Texas women's looking to have a bit of a deeper run than they did last tournament, but we'll see how they do. A little bit of a, a rocky start in the middle of the season for the women's team and a little bit of a, a rough start or rough ending to the season, but looking to have a little bit of momentum going into the tournament back here on Mean Green Game Day. Now we're going to preview the women's tournament. Not tips off tomorrow as well in the afternoon. North Texas looking to have a deeper run. Let's again do the same thing, but this time for the women's tournament. <laughs> Who is the team to beat in the women's side for Conference USA? Well, obviously it's much different than the men's tournament, but for me it's the same thing as last blog as, as I said that. But it's going to be Western Kentucky. They mm -hmm. won the last tournament, so they're the team to beat. It's as simple as that. The team who wins the tournament is the team to beat, unless they don't make playoffs and then Obviously, you're going to go with the first seed. But for me, it's going to be Western Kentucky. I'm going with the underdog, Char the Charlotte 49ers. Now, they closed out their season with some big wins over Old Dominion and Florida Atlantic. And I just think you can't deny that. And you can't deny that they're going to give North Texas a run for their money tomorrow. And, you know, I just think that this Charlotte team could possibly win it all. I'm going to go with UAB for the one fact they're not playing at home. UAB has three <laughs> yeah. conference losses. All three of them were at home by a combined 36 points, but they were undefeated on the road. This is going to be a purely road tournament, so I say they win. Well, you're looking back, uh, Gar Garen, to point you said. You said Charlotte was going to be the team to beat, but yeah. you're looking at Western Kentucky. The last time they played, they absolutely blew Charlotte out of the water, 83-61. to 61. Now, Charlotte, they are a good team. They can get it done, but I just think Western Kentucky is just too much. for. I think Western Kentucky is honestly going to win this entire tournament, so... I really don't see any team really stepping up to them. You say that Western Kentucky is going to win. However, when they played UAB, they lost 76-61. to yeah. You talked right. about it not being a convincing win. That was a convincing yeah, win for was. UAB. Right. And I, I just don't think anyone in the conference can put it all together to face UAB. It was a fluke. It was a fluke. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. 15, so, all right. Sorry, 15 <laughs> points of the fluke. Just okay. All right, so we talked about uh, – uh, Bradley has been the biggest bright spot for this North Texas team. Looking around the whole tournament, though, who is the biggest player? Who's going to make the biggest impact in the conference tournament uh, this week? I may sound like a broken record, but it is Terry L. Bradley. I mean, she is a super athlete. I mean, she is literally the, the team. I mean, she's a two-time Conference USA Player of the Week. She's shooting 50% from the three-point line. She has just been playing unbelievable basketball. I don't know how many double-doubles and triple-doubles she's had. She's had over a 500-point season. She's just unbelievable to me. So she is the player that's going to have the biggest impact of anybody. Yeah, I'm going to go the same <laughs> route. It's Terry O'Bradley as the impact player. This, 
She is the heart and soul of this North Texas team. If she gets shut down, this whole North Texas team gets shut down. She starts getting fired up. You see her drain about 15 points in that first half. Mm -hmm. North Texas can take it, take it a long ways. I, I going to say Terry O'Bradley just, <laughs> yeah. just because when you when you look at a team and know that if you could shut down one player you're going to shut down the team that's North Texas you know right there and so if Terry O'Bradley can get it going they can win a game if she gets shut down it's going to be a very long tournament for UNT <laughs> Or yeah. scratch that very short tournament for UNT <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe a long game long, for UNT a long game long trip home yeah <laughs> nope still a short trip home it's just relatively no, home, 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 home game. It won't be a pleasant trip home. Uh, now looking at, again, just the tournament as a whole, the biggest sleeper team that you have uh, throughout the week for the women's side. I have North Texas. I know we All are right. really talking about North Texas a lot today, but that's, of course, North Texas television. But North Texas has really been doing really good. Uh, tough losses, you know, they, they've really been keeping it close, but they haven't been able to get over that. But I think they can really turn it around in the second half. If their defense, I mean, if they can get back to that best defense that we saw in mm -hmm. Conference USA, they can really turn around, and especially – with Lauren Holmes, if she, you know she's really shown sparks of defensive ability and that spark of being a really special player, if everybody else can feed off that energy and Ontario Bradley can get going, this this team can make some damage in the tournament. Now my sleeper team, I'm gonna go with UAB and Rachel Childress. I mean, th this team, like uh, like Jonathan was saying, is that Jackson. sorry Jackson. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jackson was saying. <laughs> is uh, they, they blew out Western Kentucky, and you were saying that Western Kentucky was going to win it all. Yeah. I just think you can't look past this UAB team like yeah. you were doing. The fact Sorry that you just that. said UAB, <laughs> the number one seed, is the sleeper is very surprising. I'm going to go with um, uh, Louisiana Tech, just purely because of what they've been able to do in the last few games. We take a look at what they've done. They're riding five out of their last six at wins, including beating Rice at at Rice by 10 points, then going and playing UAB and beating them by 10 points, and then having Rice again at home and winning by 20. That is some top-notch um, yeah. talent that they have been able to knock out, especially the UAB team at UAB. Like I said, UAB is not great at home, but we'll, we're going to move past that. I see this Louisiana Tech team being able to string a few wins together and maybe turning a few heads along the way. Not, and maybe a little bit of disappointment around the North Texas women's team. Not a great regular season form. A lot of expectations coming into the season. But looking at the opposite side of things, who kind of surpassed their expectations? And maybe at the beginning of the season, no one expected them to make the tournament. But the, now they're in there, the most surprising team to make this tournament. Uh, yeah, you can go ahead, Garen. Been, <laughs> yeah, I feel go, like I've been talking to yeah, I'll go ahead. Just, just so we don't say the same thing. Yeah, and I'm going to go ahead and say the surprising team, Old Dominion. 8-22 and 22 record, and mm. they've locked a spot in the tournament. But how long are they going to make it? I don't know, but we'll see. I can see your 8-22 and 22 and raise that with an 0-18 oh, with Florida Atlantic last season. They were the bottom team in the conference, only able to muster four total wins in the full year. Yes, they are not a high seed, but to be able to turn it around from not having a single conference win is very impressive to be able to move up and get a spot in just one year. I'm not to agree with Jackson, Florida Atlantic, to win no games and to somehow make it into the Conference USA tournament. That's just really impressive. I, nobody expected to see that, and somehow they made it. So that, that's my uh, unexpected team to make it. All right, and then real quick, UAB winning the regular season title. Is this a team that's built to have a deep tournament run and win a tournament, or are they just going to have their regular season uh, championship at the end of this tournament? Okay, they are built to win a team. I'm not fully overlooking them, guys. So <laughs> y'all just crowding up on me, but they are unbelievable. They are 12-3 and three at home and 11 wins and one loss on the road. That is unbelievable to me. And not to mention, they did beat my team to win, Western Kentucky. They blew them out the water, which is a significant win. This team is built to win a championship. I don't think they'll win at this tournament. I think Western Kentucky is the better overall built team. I think if it's a one game off, anything can happen. But I think Western Kentucky can edge them out. But, uh, but uh, UAB is really built to win a team. I think next season they'll be a threat to deal with. I think they might be the favorites. Yeah, and I'm going to just kind of go off what you were saying. UAB, 11-1 and one on the road. Uh, you can't look past that. They're, they're going to be the top dogs in this tournament. I'm going to go with UAB as well. All right, so able to find out, maybe take a little bit of closer look at this women's tournament. But coming up on the other side of the break, we have a couple of opening games for both of these North Texas teams. We'll have a closer look at both of these opening round games for North Texas on the other side of the break. So stay with us on Mean Green Game Day.
hand out the, the hardware at the end of the tournament for whoever wins the championship for Conference USA. We're going to hand out a little bit of individual awards for some of these Conference USA players. Welcome back to Mean Green Game Day. We'll get started right here. Looking on the men's side, men's newcomer of the year. Who do you guys have as the new, men's newcomer of the year in Conference USA? You want to take this one, Shaji? Uh, yeah, well, whoever wants to go first. <laughs> you know what? I'll take it. Okay. Uh, for me, uh, men's newcomer of the year, I have Tavion Hollingsworth for Western Kentucky. He's averaging 13 points a game, almost four rebounds, two assists, 50% shooting. He's really been efficient, but not to mention this, he's the third highest scorer for Western Kentucky. He's really been putting Western Kentucky over that edge. Mm -hmm. So for me, he's been uh, the newcomer of the year for the men's. My newcomer of the year is Javon Jackson of, out of UTSA. He's averaging 18 points per game and has a 368 three-point percentage. That is super impressive for such a young kid, and there's better things yet to come in his future. I'm gonna go with Roosevelt Smart. I, I know as much as we talk about him, it doesn't sound like he's a newcomer, kinda of sounds like he's the <laughs> staple of the conference, but I'm gonna go Roosevelt Smart. He's averaging almost 19 points a game and 39% three-point shooting. Oh. Though his regular field goal is just 40%, it's not that much improved. You'd like to see that a little bit up. I'm still gonna go with Roosevelt Smart. Also, just because he, him and Ryan Woolridge have basically changed the face of this North Texas basketball team. And you cannot take that away from a player this young, what he's been able to do in just his first season. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so a couple of big players making their impact felt in the first year of Conference USA. Now looking on the women's side, who do you guys have as the women's newcomer of the year? I'm going to go back to UNT, and I'm going to go with Lauren Holmes, right. the freshman. Her and Terry L. Bradley, she's going to have to fill the huge shoes that Terry L. Bradley is going to leave. And Lauren Holmes, she, she fills every part and checks every box for UNT. I'm going to go Octavia Wilson. And, just be, and she's averaging almost 10 and a half points a game. Whenever you can come um, off the bench and prove that you deserve to be in the starting roster, that to me shows that you belong on the newcomers of, or newcomers of the conference team, mm -hmm. which she is. She was the first player named. And so I'm going to go Octavia Wilson. Yeah, it seems that mean. Garen, I've been agreeing a lot lately. We're basically best friends, but I also have I also have Lauren Holmes for North Texas. She's really been great. Like I've been saying earlier in the show, that she has those sparks where she just has those great defensive efforts, and mm -hmm. she just really uh, shows clutch uh, shows cl that clutch gene when crunch time comes. And she, you know, she nine points, five rebounds. That seems average, but defensively, she leads North Texas in term and you know in steals. So defensively, she's really a powerhouse. If she can develop that offensive game a little more. Man, she can easily fill up Terry O'Bradley's shoes, in my opinion. All right, now going back over to the men's side of Conference USA, we already talked about which men's player could perhaps be the, the, the biggest impact throughout the tournament, but who's had the biggest impact in the conference throughout this regular season? Who do you guys have as your men's player of the year? No, I think we can all say this on three, but John Elmore out of Marshall, 23 points per game, seven rebounds, and six assists. I mean, you can't look past that. That mm. guy is impressive the best player in the conference. He, he deserves the MVP. I'm going to go with John Elmore as well. He leads his team in three of the four major categories, including points, rebounds, and assists per game. Whenever you take a look at this conference, we see every single team has their standout players. But John Elmore has been able to go above and beyond those players for every other team. He has been able to lead the conference in points per game. And we're going to see more of that coming up in this conference tournament. See for Marshall to make a run. Uh, I feel like we should change it to the John Elmore show because I'm also going <laughs> to go with John Elmore. I mean, first in points, assists, minutes. He's top 20 in rebounds, three-point shooting, top 10 in steals. He is just the complete player that you want, which is why I'm really liking Marshall in this tournament. He's the only reason I'm really pulling for Marshall and to go for a deep run. So for me, it's going to be John Elmore. All right, now a couple of really good coaching jobs on the men's side. Uh, Grant McCaslin, the newcomer uh, for the Mean Green, a big turnaround for him. He did that last year with Arkansas State. But looking at the conference as a whole again, who do you guys have as the men's coach of the year leading their team to a lot of success, maybe a lot of unexpected success? I think that y'all should know my answer by now, but it is Grant McCaslin. <laughs> like you were saying, he's coming out of Arkansas State. He's also came out of Baylor, and now he has brought the UNT men's basketball program back to life. Grant Coach McCaslin is going to be here for a long time, and UNT has many good years ahead of them. I'm going to say Coach Cass as well, but sadly, I don't think he's going to be here for a long time. Other top tier programs are mm -hmm. going to see what he's been able to do with a two win conference team last season, moving him into the seventh seed overall. I give him within the next three years, some top tier team is going to pick him up. 
I have a different opinion. I'm going oh, to go with Middle right. Tennessee coach Kermit go. Davis. I mean, you're looking at it, since 2015, they have always been the top two seed mm -hmm. for Conference USA. For him to turn it around is honestly unbelievable to me. And they have the best record. They're overall the, statistically the best team. They have the best defense. So for me, it's going to be Kermit Davis easily for Middle Tennessee. So Davis able to, to keep up that kind of uh, expectation for Middle Tennessee, keep them up there toward the top. But looking on the women's side, um, Jaylee Mitchell in her, I believe, fourth year here at North Texas. But who's been the, the best coach, the coach of the year on the women's side for Conference USA, at least heading into the tournament? I'm going to let Jackson go first because he hasn't gone first in all the show. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Jackson. I'm, I'm going to go first just because I know um, someone's going to agree with me. I'm going to go with Randy Norton. Just to be able to pull off a 13-3 and three conference record is nothing short of amazing, no matter what program you're with, unless you're at a team like um, North Carolina or Duke and that's kind of expected of you. But for a UAB team who is not exactly in a prime recruiting location, to be able to pull off a record like that going 24-5 and five overall, I'm going to have to give Coach of the Year to Randy Norton. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say Randy Norton as well. I had the best record in the conference. You can't pass that. Uh, Three for three for Randy Norton. I mean, you're looking at the 2016-2017 season, they were 15-15, and 15 and they lost the first round. And then now 2017-2018 season, they're first. That is unbelievable to me how he completely turned around, kind of pulling a coach, uh, head coach McCaslin. So he's really been good. So for me, he's been the women's coach of the year. All right, so it's been very exciting here uh, for Conference USA. A lot of big names going around and a lot of uh, good awards coming around for these teams. Uh, just real quick. Again, we talked about uh, maybe previewing a little bit quickly uh, both of the tip-off games for these North Texas teams. Uh, tomorrow we have North Texas and Charlotte on the women's side. Who do you guys, or just kind of what are the keys to the game real quick for North Texas, the women's side, uh, to try and get past that first round? Well, let's get Terry L. Bradley going because this team runs through Terry L. Bradley. She gets going, get Lauren Holmes going on defense. UNT, that, that's a for sure win. It's going to be bench presence for me. If the mm -hmm. UNT bench can beat um, the Charlotte bench, I say this is going to be a very close game, but I think Terry Bradley will put it over the top. But for me, it all comes down to how the bench is going to play. You know the stars are going to show up. I think the bench will show up. But for me, it's defense. They have to step up. Are you looking at that last game? Uh, against Rice. I mean, they forced six shot clock violations. They had a lot of, they forced a lot of turnovers, I believe, in high 20s, but they still couldn't pull away because they, you know, it was just, they couldn't pull off in the second half. Mm -hmm. So if they continue to play that high level defense to get back to being one of those best defenses in the nation, they can pull off against us. So for me, it's going to be overall defense. All right, now on the men's side, a tip off against Louisiana Tech at 8.30 at the star. Again, keys to the game, quick preview between those two teams. Now, Law Tech, they've got three players that are averaging 13 points or more, and that is going to be tough for Coach McCaslin and the rest of his team to beat. But like we've all said, Roosevelt, Smart, and Ryan Woolridge get those two guys going. I think that North Texas is going to be good. They're, they have the position to go ahead and move on into the next round. Will they make it all the way? Mm. I don't know, but maybe in a few years, yeah, I think they'll win a tournament. Nice. To me, it all comes down to rebounding. I think that's going to be the key. All right, so real quick, we had those recaps of those games. Now, coming up on the other side of the break, we'll predict who's the winner of those two opening round matchups for North Texas. We'll also take a look at who we think is going to win the tournaments as a whole. So stay with us here on Mean Green Game Day. Well, again, just a little bit a little bit under than 24 hours away from these tournaments starting off for Conference USA. We've taken a collective look at both sides of the tournament and some players and coaches of the year in Conference USA leading up to our favorite segment here on Mean Green Game Day, and that, of course, is the prediction segment. We'll get things started here right away. The first game uh, tomorrow for North Texas will be the women's side, North Texas versus Charlotte, a 2 o'clock tip-off from Frisco. I have, North, I have uh, Charlotte actually winning this game. Uh, North Texas, uh, the women's team going in on the three-game losing streak. I think Charlotte maybe uh, has a little bit more momentum going their way. I think the 49ers pull this one off. Uh, you break my heart, Nick, but I'm going to go with <laughs> North Texas. The last time these two teams played, we actually uh, – North Texas won 73-68. to Lauren Holmes hit that late-game three-pointer to take over the game. Uh, Charlotte had 20 points in the first five minutes of the game, so North Texas needs to avoid that. Mm -hmm. If they do, they'll pull off, so I got North Texas. Now, I was talking big about Charlotte er earlier, so I got to stick with Charlotte right here. They're going to carry their momentum from their win streak over again in the game to North Texas. They're going to move on to the next round. I'm going to go with Charlotte 
due to the fact that North Texas has not been playing up to par lately. I don't think there is enough time or practice that they can fit in between the end of the regular season and the beginning of the game tomorrow to be able to get some momentum moving into play Charlotte. I think Charlotte also has too much momentum to overpower North Texas, so I'm going to go with Charlotte in this game. All right, and then looking on the men's side, an 8.30 tip-off for North Texas and Louisiana Tech. Now again, North Texas coming off of just a two-win two uh, in conference play last season, being in the middle of the pack, making the tournament this season. I have North Texas. I think they have a little bit of momentum. I think the coaching is there for North Texas. And I think they get a first-round win against Louisiana Tech. I'm going to go with North Texas. The last game uh, Louisiana Tech won, uh, 65, uh, 66 to 65. Roosevelt Smart had a huge game with 23 points. Ryan Rulwich only had seven points, so he didn't have that game up to par that we're used to seeing. So I think he's going to have a huge game. Roosevelt Smart's going to have a huge game. AJ Lawson's going to have a, a huge game. I, it's a gut feeling the bench is going to come up, so I think North Texas is going to pull a close one against Louisiana Tech. I've got North Texas over La Tech as well. Roosevelt Smart, he's going to catch on fire, and I think he's going to play his best when he's on the big stage. I also have North Texas pulling out this game. When we take a look at the last matchup against La Tech and North Texas, North Texas gave up almost seven points higher in field goal percentage than they had given up all year in season average. They also shot nearly 10% lower than they have all year. I think they right their wrongs for this next matchup. I see them winning this game. I also think it's going to be close, but I think they're going to be able to pull it off this time. All right, and now we've looked at both of these tournaments as a whole. Let's start off on the women's side of things, looking to pick a women's tournament champion uh, right here. I think I have Western Kentucky uh, really going all the way and getting their 2018 Conference USA Championship. I'm going to go with UAB. I mean, their road record's been amazing. I mean, 11-1 and one on the season, this is basically <laughs> going to be in their territory. So I have UAB winning this women's tournament. Now it is March. And it's madness, and I'm going to go ahead and say the Charlotte 49ers are going to shock right. everyone. Oh. They're going to win it all. That's bold. I'm going to go with UAB just purely for the fact that through the conference on the road, they are undefeated. I don't believe that is going to change moving into the conference tournament. I understand these are called neutral games, mm -hmm. but they are all on the road. They're in a visiting locker room. They are going to be able to ride the momentum they've had all year and the confidence they've been able to build up, and they're going to – just turn this tournament on its end and they're going to run the table. All right, now looking on the men's side, a lot of very good teams, uh, the top three teams, Middle Tennessee, Old Dominion, Western Kentucky, all sort of on the same record, all right there clumped up at the top. But I actually have Old Dominion winning it all. I think they might have a pretty good chance and will have a pretty good run. I think they ended up I think they end up winning the whole thing. Yeah, I also have Old Dominion. They have better matchups in the tournament and not to mention uh, Marshall is going to face off against Middle Tennessee, and I think Marshall is going to beat Middle Tennessee. Marshall has Middle Tennessee's number, and I think Old Dominion is just overall a better team than Middle Tennessee. So I have uh, Middle, uh, not, uh, sorry, I have Old Dominion winning this <laughs> tournament. Now I'm going to go opposite of what y'all had. I'm going to go with Middle Tennessee State winning it all, just because they've been there before. They know mm -hmm. how to win. I'm going to go with Middle Tennessee as well. They have the experience of going to Marsh Madness, winning a game, making it to the round of 32, shocking the nation. Now we see them going in. Yes, they have Marshall in their half of the bracket. It's going to be a very tough game, but I think revenge is going to be a big factor. I see them winning this game, and I don't think Western Kentucky or Old Dominion have the matchup to be able to beat Middle Tennessee. So I see Middle Tennessee winning the tournament. All right, so there you have it. Those are our predictions for the men's and women's tournaments. We'll see how accurate we end up being. It's always fun to watch, like Garen said. March Madness, always exciting. Thank you for tuning in all season long. For our producer, Kyle Yeomans, for our director, Joey Catalano, I'm your host, Nick Laupius, alongside Saji Adam, Garen Schantz, and Jackson Donovan. Make sure to follow SportsZone. We'll have a little bit of other uh, Conference USA tournament action there. And follow our social media. We'll have updates throughout the whole tournament on Mean Green Game Day on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. This is Nick Lapia saying so long from North Texas.